Hey everyone, uh, this is uh, Tim with Tim's Oregon Adventures. Um, I decided to make a return trip to the High Desert Museum. Um, last time I was here was uh, uh, mid-August of last year, um, after my return trip from Fort Rock. So they've added they've added a few new exhibits here that I wanted to check out. So I decided to come back. And yes, there is a lot of snow on the ground. <laughs> Actually, it looks pretty, doesn't it? So I'm going to go inside and check in and I will see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so I am back. Ooh. Yeah, there was two new exhibits I wanted to see and one of them was called Daredevils. Oh, look at this cool motorcycle. Flying Irishman. It's the 1966 Triumph Custom. Danny Edwards, known as the Flying Irishman, jumped motorcycles throughout the 1970s. After over 30 years, he came, he came out of retirement at the age of 72 to jump this 1966 Triumph. That is a cool bike. Oh, this is um, Danny Edwards' suit. Let's see, leather is worn by Danny Edwards, including his cane, which is sometimes a necessity. Broken bones weren't unusual to the world of motorcycle jumping, and sometimes just part of the show. Yeah, it's Danny Edwards' uh, suit that he used. And then there's his cane. I was called a flying Irishman. Oh, he's a local legend. Huh. There he is, there's Danny. Danny Edward is a flying Irishman. Inspired by Evil Knievel, Danny Edwards made his first jump in 1972. I got my start by reading a magazine article on Evil Knievel, Edwards recounted. The article listed the dimensions of his ramp, so I decided I'd build, I'd build a set of my own. I got so caught up in making the ramps that I had just had to do a jump. Like Knievel, he understood the importance of putting on a show. He declared himself the Flying Irishman and selected a white leather jumpsuit and green belt with shamrocks to go with his new name. Uh, born in 1945 to a logging family in Grand Ronde, Oregon, Edwards completed motorcycle jumps throughout the state for about 13 years. He finally stopped in 1985 when he crashed and broke a few ribs after breaking through the ramp upon landing in Prineville. So there he is in 2017. At the age of 72, jumping two semis. Wow. Let's see. 
Edwards came out of retirement at the age of 72 to jump his 1966 Triumph over two vintage semi-trucks. While an impressive feat, Edwards' widest crack that it turns out that jumping doesn't take a whole lot of motorcycle skill. It's just a big hole in the middle that keeps most people from doing it. from far from the 70s I think oh it's a toothbrush okay that's cool yeah you look good evil Snake River Canyon before Q Mills attempted jump in 1974. This is one of his uh, This might be one of his suits. I'm pretty sure everybody knows the story of uh, Evil Knievel. I believe he's, he's broken every bone in his body, from what I remember. <laughs> Woman in the world. Let's see, Kitty O'Neill loves speed in December 1970. Oh. See, born in 1946, O'Neill contracted the mumps, measles, and smallpox as a baby, which caused her to lose her hearing. As she grew older, her mother taught her to read lips. As a 12-year-old, she discovered diving. She was an impressive diver and likely headed to the 1964 Olympics when she broke her wrist and developed spinal meningitis. Doctors warned that she might not walk again. It's been horrible. Uh, Kitty O'Neill loves speed. In December 1976, she set the women's land speed record in Oregon's Alvord Desert and held it for over 40 years. She averaged 512.71 miles per hour, reaching a maximum speed of 618. 
She had a good feeling and wanted to try and break the men's land speed record too. The toy maker Marvin Glass and Associates, which held the rights to the car she was driving, forbade her from doing going for the men's record. Uh, when she recovered, she chose to pursue speed instead. She took up motorcycle racing and high-speed water skiing. She also worked as a stunt double and became the first woman to join Hollywood's elite stunt agency. She did stunts for the popular show Wonder Woman, including setting a high fall record when she jumped 127 feet from the top of a building to an airbag below. By 36, she was burned out and ready to retire from the world's world of stunts and speed records. So this is Katie O'Neill's uh, helmet and racing suit. Yeah, fastest woman in the world, 512.7 miles per hour. Yeah, that was Katie O'Neill. <laughs> it was really cool. Debbie Lawler. Hmm. Queen of the stunt women, world, women's world record jump holder, 16 cars at 101 feet. Let's see, Premier Helmets presented Debbie Lawler with this gold helmet, recognizing her as the world champion female motorcycle jumper in 1973. Debbie Lawler, during many of her stunts, including the the night she broke Evil Knievel's record for the longest indoor motorcycle jump. This is her suit and her helmet. That's really cool. Oh, here's Debbie. Debbie Lawler in a flying. Oh, she was born in Grants Pass. That's really cool. See, born at Grants Pass, Oregon in 1952, Debbie Lawler began motorcycle jumping at the age of 19. She described the thrill of jumping, saying, I like the feeling of freedom. It's like flying over the highest mountains. She fell in love with speed as a child, racing go-karts at the track her father owned. He encouraged her and her sisters to be tough, fearless, and to complete, compete with the boys. After fighting her way into what many people said was a man sport, Lawler broke Evil Knievel's record for the longest indoor jump traveling 101 feet, including 16 Chevy pickups in 1974. She had set out to break Evil Knievel's record and demonstrate that women could be just as fierce of competitors as men. As the first woman in the sport, however, she, she had to be careful how she presented herself publicly so as to not be ostracized. She, for example, declared, in my mind, I recognize no other male jumper Evil Knievel started it all, and as long as he is around, that's it. My thing is not to compete with Evil at all. Knievel is the king of jumpers, right? Well, I'm the queen, and the queen can't beat the king. It's impossible. And I don't like to compete against men anyway. I'm, I'm a girl. Knievel labeled regain the record, but Lawler still holds the record for the longest indoor jump by a woman. After a crash in 1974 that threw her from her bike and sent her tumbling 150 feet, Lawler gave up her jumping career. She went on to become an entrepreneur, an estate manager, a talented manager, a talent manager, and producer of Daredevil shows. <laughs> well, let's continue. exhibit they have is called Damn It, Weavers and Us. Huh. 
Yeah, so previously the uh, um, the Burning Man exhibit used to be in here, and it was replaced with, with this one. Um, you probably saw it in my, um, you can see it in my last video, but this, this is exhibits in here now. Let's see, Oregon National Guard Garrison Cap, 1988. This cap has the unit crest of Oregon National Guard, the unit's motto, Empire Builders. It is emblazoned across the center of the design. The beaver is the state mammal of Oregon. To many, it represents industriousness. And that's a beaver pal right there. What's this? So this is a, a beaver fur coat from the 1940s. Oh, this is uh, from the Benton County Historical Museum. They must, uh, they must have it on. So High Desert Museum must have it on loan. Let's see. Ad Musk Castatorium Whiskey. Ooh. Castatorium is an oily yellow substance from castor sacs under a beaver's tail. Both male and female beavers use it to mark their territory and waterproof their fur. It is also a food additive. Uh, this whiskey is flavored with castorium. According to Tamworth Distilling, uh, the sack excretion exhibits fright and fruit qualities and rich leathery notes along with creamy vanilla aroma. <laughs> Interesting. Is our state, um, our state animal, I believe, for Oregon, <laughs> and it's on the uh, the flag, the Oregon state, the Oregon flag. Is that a beaver skeleton? Giant beaver. Most complete. Oh, it's a giant beaver skeleton. It's a cast. It's not the real thing. American beer skulls right here.
silly, huh? That's a pretty cool exhibit. I'm trying to remember where the outdoor exhibits are. Oh, they're out here. Okay. Okay, so last time I was here, back in August, um, I didn't have time to do the outdoor exhibits because they were. It was, pretty close to closing so I'm gonna do those today uh, so let's go out here and check this out shall we Ew. I don't know if I want to go over there. It's really, really muddy. We have this, this really cool looking wagon right here. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to step in there because it is it's really muddy. Sculpture is at. I think it's over here somewhere, if I remember correctly. I like this little creek here. That's cool. Oh, there it is. Never mind. I found it. There's a certain sculpture I was looking for, and I just found it. It's over here. Yeah, this cool little pond here. Too bad. 
love this uh, sculpture right here. They're down this way. We're gonna go see uh, uh, the otters. <laughs>
Yes, they're down below. So I wanted to point out, um, as soon as I walked through this door, um, I saw an object floating in the water here to the right. And at first off, I thought it was, it might have been a dead otter, but it was in fact just a log. So I got scared there for a second until I got close. So that's what that was. Oh, there they are. They're right there. <laughs> They're staying, these guys are staying warm. <laughs> yeah, they're in there. It's a little dark, but they're... You, I don't know if you can see them that well. They're in there. And yeah, they're just trying to... They're in there trying to stay warm. <laughs> Flying. Yeah, sorry if it's a little dark, but they're they're in there um, just trying to stay warm. They're, yeah, they're in there. <laughs> I was wondering where they were. I say, oh, they're trying to stay warm. <laughs> um, if you're looking for them, they're in there. <laughs> they're they're now they're in there trying to stay warm. They're in that little window right there. I just saw them. They're in there. They're in there trying to stay warm. Yeah, they're so yeah they're in there. I was wondering why they weren't out here swimming around, and I I looked inside this window right here and say, oh, they're in there trying to stay warm. There's like three of them, I think. I think there's three. Yeah. Yeah. Cute little things, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, because I was I went up above to see where they were. There, I'll see them from down below, and I didn't see them. Then I saw this glass, this little window over here, and said, "Oh, there they are!" And they're trying to stay warm. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're in there trying to stay warm. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Yeah, they're just trying to they're in their little hole trying to stay warm. Uh, there's another part I wanted to check out. It's uh past the settlers' cabin. I thought I would come here first. Yeah, I didn't. It was weird. I looked there and I didn't see him swimming. Saying, so, "Oh, well, maybe I can view him from down below." <laughs> uh, I thought I would give you a heads up. Um, if you go down 
If you go down below, they're not actually out swimming. Okay. Um, if you walk in there, there's like a glass, a glass type window type thing. Uh -huh. They're in there snuggling. Oh, That's what they're doing. You have to go inside in order to see them. <laughs> <laughs> I just give, give him a heads up. Let's see where he's. Okay, the cabin's this way. Yeah, I like that one, uh, the sculpture of the of that mare in fall. I think it's barbed wire, I think. Yeah, I thought I would go see the otters first. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, let's go check out check out the uh, sawmill. Yeah, it's not in uh, operation right now. The only time that they have it in operation is during the summer. So, we'll check it out anyways. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Actually saw this in operation. Uh, uh, yeah, last uh, summer it was like the last day of operation. I, I came here. Uh, no, I'm not going that way. It's all muddy and icy. Yeah, they only operate this in the summer, so. And from what I heard from before, they actually used, um, they used this sawmill uh, 
to build this barn that's over here. We'll check that out. A wagon. I like this old stuff, it's really cool. Yeah, they used, uh, they actually used a sawmill um, to build this, uh, to build this barn. Sometimes have uh, like one or two horses in here. I don't see any. Uh, maybe they just do that in the summer, I think, when the weather's nicer. Because you have three. I think it's three stalls. Yeah, they have like three stalls here on there. On occasion, I'll have like one or two horses in here. This time they don't. Uh, right back. Let's go this way so I don't get tripped on. <laughs> Everything's melting. I guess we're having a warm day today.
I thought that was pretty cool. They actually used they used that uh, sawmill to build that barn. I've seen the otters already. I don't need to go back. <laughs> Love this sculpture of a mare in a fall. It's made out of barbed wire. It's really cool.
I like this little creek right here. It's really neat. Yeah, that must be the uh, birds of prey exhibit. That's one nice look at this covered wagon. Now we're going there with the sign, but it's, it's, this area is just way too muddy. That's really cool. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? So they used to um, travel before uh, travel trailers uh, were used. <laughs> so that was back in the day. So that was my uh, revisit here at the High Desert Museum. I thought I would come back here because uh, um, since I was here last, which was back in August, they've added um, two new exhibits, so I wanted to come here and check them out. So it was pretty neat seeing the uh, the beaver exhibit and the daredevil, seeing that bike and a, a suit that was owned by um, Evil Knievel. That was really neat. Um, this is actually a, a popular spot here in Central Oregon. Um, I've been out here a few times, so it's it's neat coming out here whenever they they have um, new exhibits. So if you're in the the Central Oregon area, um, um, I highly recommend you you come here. So yeah, so that's going to do it for this video today, guys. I want to thank you for watching. If you like what you see, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe button. Um, keep an eye out for future videos, but until then, I'll catch you later.